now my next topic of discussion is the zygomycosis now this zygomycosis is caused by all the fungi which are belonging to the phylum zygomycota from this you also come to know from where the zygomycosis word has come so this zygomycosis word has been derived from the phylum zygomycota why that so so that is because the fungi which are belonging to the phylum zygomycota they cause this zygomycosis infection now zygomycosis is not a single infection rather zygomycosis is a uh, is a, you know mucormycosis plus intompothoromycosis that means uh, the if if the patient is having mucormycosis that may broadly be called as zygomycosis or even if the patient is having intompothoromycosis that may also be broadly called as the zygomycosis that means zygomycosis can be of two types this mucormycosis and the intompothoromycosis okay now this mucormycosis can be caused by three most important fungi while the intompothoromycosis is caused by two most important fungi so first talking about the intompothoromycosis the uh, species name or those fungi name which are causing this intompothoromycosis are the bacidiobolus ranarum and the conidiobolus coronatus now you can omit this information this is not important for us to remember but but you should remember this thing the mucormycosis because we are concerned about this mucormycosis at the uc level and the organism which are causing this mucormycosis are the rhizopus microsporus and the lichthemia corymbifera okay the lichthemia corymbifera and the mucor racemos these are the three important uh, fungi uh, uh, fungal organisms which are causing the mucormycosis and uh, our topic of discussion under zygomycosis is also the mucormycosis only we are not going to discuss this intompothoromycosis because that is not in this syllabus we are concerned about the mucormycosis only whenever someone asks you about the causative organisms of the mucormycosis these names should be at your tongue tips that is the rhizopus microsporus the lichthemia corymbifera and the mucor racemos so talking about the mucormycosis this mucormycosis this word you must have heard in the covid pandemic so mucormycosis why was that mucormycosis uh, very much commonly seen in the covid pandemic so there are many reasons for that the one reason is that the covid occurred to the patients who were already diabetic and the diabetes is a uh, it's such a disease which reduces the immunity of a person the second thing is that the all the covid patients were treated with steroids uh, and and the high dose steroids those high dose steroids reduces the immunity of any person drastically and that also in the diabetic person that reduces to even very lesser amount okay so immunity is drastically reduced in the diabetic patients with this use of the steroid therapy during their covid illness so that uh, predisposes those person to the infection with this mucor myco uh, i mean the fungi Uh, of this zygomycota phylum and uh, that causes this mucormycosis uh, uh, in those patients so that's why the mucormycosis was very common in the covid pandemic in the covid patients okay so the organisms which are causing this mucormycosis are the three organisms the rhizopus microsporus the lichthemia corymbifera and the mucor racemos this you should remember these three names and uh, one very typical characteristic that we should know is that these fungi are the angio invasive fungi you will read about this angio invasiveness of this fungi or the pathology of this mucormycosis in the ent uh, in your third year very uh, you know in very detail there you will come to know that what is the meaning of the angio invasive fungi angio invasive le okay let me tell you what is angio invasive fungi so angio invasive fungi means this fungi infiltrate into the blood vessels and as they infiltrate into the blood vessels they block those blood vessels as a result the blood supply to the distal part of that uh, blood vessel is hampered the blood supply cannot occur to the distal part uh, through that obstructed blood vessel okay so uh, due to that the area which is distal to the obstruction in the uh, uh, in the in those arteries that gets necrosed okay so the area distal to that obstruction gets necrosed and that becomes ischemic uh, gangrene occurs there occurs black uh, necrosis everything happens there and that's why you must have been seeing 
uh, in the co- you must have been seen in the covid pandemic the, the you know the blackish uh, you know uh, necrosis area in the uh, in the periorbital region or in the you know in the mouth and the nose so th- those are the clinical features of the mucor mycosis that it causes necrosis okay and that is the meaning of the angio invasive fungi now the characteristic feature of this fungi these three fungi what is the characteristic feature of these three fungi that is they have oseptate thin walled fungal hyphae and that is with wide angle branching almost at the right angle branch each of the ward each of the ward of this uh, characteristic feature is important for us because that will help us in the diagnosis during the microscopy okay so it it has a septic hyphae it has thin walled fungal hyphae the hyphae have wide angle branching points okay these branchings are at right angle so each word of these characteristic feature is important for us because th- this will help us in diagnosis of the fungi now the risk factors so i already told you all about the risk factors of the opportunistic infection that was a b c d uh, right uh, i i am describing that from right from candidiasis then in the cryptococcus and then now here also but the most important point here in the case of the zygomycosis is that it uh, uh, favors the fe overload state that means fe overload state is also a risk factor for the is a risk factor for the zygomycosis generally we do not see i mean we do not see that the fe overload state is a risk factor for any infection but here in the zygomycosis the iron overload state is a risk factor for the zygomycosis other than that the uh, diabetic ketoacidosis that means diabetes itself the patient on iron therapy because that will cause iron overload and the steroid therapy because that will reduce the immunity and the immunosuppression or that will also decrease the immunity and the patient on uh, uh, dialysis that is end stage renal disease they also reduce the immunity so all these are the factors which are reducing the immunity or they are increasing the iron overload so b- both of these conditions are the risk factor for the zygomycosis infection for the mucor mycosis infection okay now talking about the clinical features or what are the clinical manifestations that we can see with the mucor mycosis so uh, if these fungi causes invasion in the face in the facial area so they very commonly cause infection in the rhino cerebral area and that is called as the rhino cerebral mucor mycosis rhino cerebral means nose and cerebrum okay so nose and cerebrum these two areas are very commonly involved with the mucor mycosis and this is characterized by facial pain there will be severe facial pain there will be periorbital pain blurred vision will be there due to infiltration into the optic nerve there will be proptosis there will be vision loss so these are the characteristic features that we see in the case of the rhino cerebral mucor mycosis and this is the most common type of presentation okay this is the most common type of presentation that we also see in the di- uh, in the covid pandemic Th- that was the rhino cerebral mucor mycosis only then uh, it can also cause the pulmonary mucor mycosis which may present as dyspnea cough or chest pain that close differential diagnosis of which is the pulmonary aspergillosis which this you may leave also and the other than that the cutaneous mucor mycosis the gi mucor mycosis and the disseminated mucor mycosis all of these can be a clinical manifestation or a mood of presentation of the mucor mycosis the mucor mycosis can present with any of these manifestations next the question arises is how are we going to diagnose the case of the mucor mycosis so for diagnosis we have to uh, collect the specimen first of all so for the specimen collection we have got the tissue biopsies to get from that necrosed area so we'll get the tissue biopsies from those necrosed area and then we have got the histopathological examination also so in the histopathological examination we have the methanamine silver staining of the specimen and with this stain uh, when we examine under the microscope we can see the oseptate hyaline hyphae that is the characteristic feature in the zygomycota uh, family uh, fungi sorry phylum fungi the fungi of the zygomycota 
asylum and then we can also do the culture on the cerebral dextrose agar at 25 degree centigrade and that will uh, show us the white cotton woolly colonies these are also called as the lid lifters why is that so that is because when the culture plate is covered with a lid uh, with a lid then these white cottony woolly colonies these cottony woolly colonies will lift the lid will lift this lid up so that's why they are called as the lid lifters also okay but uh, this is true this is true for the all the other uh, fungi which are causing the mucor mycosis but not for the rhizopus because in the case of rhizopus we get to see a special type of a special variety of uh, colonies i mean special characteristic colonies that are the salt and paper colonies salt and paper colonies are seen with the rhizopus and this is a important mcq point as well because this is a exception so this becomes a mcq point as well that the rhizopus shows the salt and paper colonies while other uh, uh, fungi like the lithothemia and the mucor racemos they show the white cotton woolly colonies they show the white cotton woolly colonies but this rhizopus shows this salt and paper colonies then we do the microscopy so in the microscopy we will do uh, perform the will do uh, or will make a lpcb mount that is lateral flu cotton blue mount and then we will examine it under the microscope and when we examine it under the microscope we will see this thing so please remember this if you in if you can remember then please remember this whole world okay this is the oseptate hyaline hyphae okay oseptate hyaline hyphae is seen with sporangio spores containing sporangium at the tip of the sporangio four arising from the hyphae i will tell you the meaning of each of is each of the words uh, uh, that has been mentioned here so till now you remember this whole sentence because that is important for us from both mcq point of view and from exam point of view as well so next is the rhizoids what are rhizoids please remember these definitions i will tell you what are these in a with a diagram also so rhizoids are the root like outgrowths arising from the oseptate hyphae and the position of the rhizoids varies in different species so that is the rhizopus in the in the rhizopus the rhizoid is present at the nodal area while in lithothemia it is present in the internodal area while in mucor the rhizoids are absent this can be remembered with the rl mandal work in national investigation agency r for rhizopus l for lithothemia and m for mucor while n for nodal rhizoids uh, i for internodal rhizoid and a for absent rhizoid see here r for n l for i and m for a so you can remember by this this is a uh, important mcq point okay so you should remember this that what are the site of uh, site where the rhizoids are present in the rhizopus in the uh, in the rhizopus in the lithothemia and in the mucor this position of the rhizoids are important now coming to what are the meaning of the sporangiospore sporangiophore sporangium and the rhizoids what are the meaning of all these things so see here with the diagram you can under you will be able to understand that this is the hyphae okay this green color marking i am doing this is the hyphae this is oseptate hyphae you can very well see that it is a oseptate hyphae now these you can see this these are the root like outgrowths we can see from the hyphae these root like outgrowths are called as the rhizoids now from the hyphae from the hyphae if you can see that there are some tube like things arising okay there are this tube like things arising from the hyphae these are the sporangiophore these are the sporangiophore and now at the tip of the sporangiophore you can see that these are the globular things at the tip of the sporangiophore these are the sporangium and inside this sporangium what is there is called as the sporangio spores okay those are sporangio spores so now you can very well differentiate between the sporangio spore the sporangium and the sporangio four and the rhizoids these are all different things so this is the characteristic uh, uh, feature and the characteristic uh, type of uh, fungi the, uh, the rhizopus that we see under the microscope and lithothemia is seen like this under the microscope while mucor is seen like this in the 
under the microscope so this is all about the mucormycosis the lab diagnosis part is important and you should remember this okay you should remember this uh, whole sentence plus you should also remember this part this characteristic of the all the fungi which are causing the mucormycosis that is the rhizopus microsporus the leukemia corymbifera and the mucor racemus so with this we come to an end with for the zygomycosis next i will be describing the aspergillosis